They're quite a funny bunch Some like to creep and crawl And others like to crunch Some run so very fast They're really quite a show While others like to bask And hover high and low We're the funny animals The different everywhere you go We're the funny animals From head to toe Out in nature, there are animals that sometimes eat plants, like the bearded dragon, and the Australian whiptail and the woolly monkey, vegetarians when they want to be. And some that add to their regular plant diet by swallowing small stones like ostriches, but don't you try that. And some spend hours and hours eating tons of plants, like the elephants. Each one can take in 200 kilograms every day. That's 400 pounds. Leaves and grass and fruit and grain. An orangutan eats leaves of fruit trees and plants as well as fruit and dry plants. He's a real glutton for plant food, but his table manners are atrocious. On the other hand, the koala is a very fussy eater. There are about 350 varieties of eucalyptus tree in Australia, and how many will he eat? Only about 20 of them. And that's one and a half kilograms, three pounds every day. But there is one that nature has given a very long neck. Now, why is that? To make it easy to reach the high acacia leaves. Of course, it's the giraffe. From a height of five meters, 15 feet, they can wrap their tongues between the spikes to pick the leaves. It's all the same, it's not so easy. Everything's just fine for herbivorous creatures. You know, plant eaters like gazelles and antelope. Ah, if all the animals could live on leaves and fresh water. If meat eaters, the carnivorous animals, didn't exist. Well, let's say it's not much fun serving a cheetah his lunch. Not at all, but that's the law of nature. And cheetahs are entitled to eat regularly, like all the big cats. Another dangerous carnivorous animal, the crocodile. But it's different with them. They can go for months without eating. And of course, from time to time, they have to build up their strength, too. All this is part of nature's food chain. The crocodile eats the zebra, the zebra eats grass, crocodiles eat the zebra, vultures finish off the carcass, but the story doesn't end there. Because the vulture, in turn, is eaten by the lioness, and so it goes. And the lioness, she's not in danger. Nobody is after her, she's untouchable. They all have their own way of feeding their babies. Jackals, wolves, and wild dogs first swallow the food, and then they bring it up to put it into the mouths of their young ones, partly digested. The meat is easier for the babies to take. Mmm, delicious. In the style of a family banquet, giant lizards, the Varans, gladly share the meal together, and these creatures can measure two meters, six feet. And they are renowned meat eaters. They're able to devour an entire goat. Another thing you find in nature, the really clever ones, like chameleons. They don't even have to move to feast on passing insects. Their telescopic tongues let them stay in one place and cover a whole territory. The Tasmanian devil is another one that's a terrific insect hunter, but he doesn't hesitate before any prey, from the easiest, like lizards, to the most dangerous, like scorpions. With his impressive jaw, he can crush a bone into a thousand pieces and eat an entire horse, a hundred times his size in three days. Of course, he has to be helped by his little pals, naturally. It's like that with wolves, altogether devouring a deer. Wolves usually save some of the kill for later, burying what they don't eat. All the better for the wolf cubs, too bad for anybody not invited. Whether big or little, weak or strong, looking for food is a constant challenge that marks the daily lives of every animal. <laughs> 